accomplishments that we've achieved. No, to us, it's about you. Let Weddermark Keith go to work for you. It's more to us. It's personal. I know that May represents an awful lot of things. Mother's Day, graduations, your kindergartner moves up to first grade. But did you know that May also happens to be National Hearing and Speech Month? And we're going to focus on that a little bit this morning through the Hamilton County Health Department and the Speech and Language Center here, Speech and Hearing Center, sorry, uh, here in Chattanooga. Dr. Stephen Miller is next to me. He is with the Health Department. And Taylor Boswick kindly corrected me. She is with, she's the president of the Speech and Hearing Center. So good to see you both. Um, I'm going to start with the kids, Dr. Miller, for sure. a minute, because they are all about to launch into summer. And you know what that means. That means fun galore, 4th of July fireworks, endless days in the pool, right. all the things. Parents don't always think about hearing loss being a concern for kids, but it can be. Uh, it, it's true. We take our children to a number of events, amusement parks, roller coasters, um, uh, 4th of July fireworks. And we need to be mindful of the fact that if those sounds hurt, if we experience ringing in the ears from a Taylor Swift concert or anything like that, then our children are experiencing this as well. And we need to be mindful of that. And we need to try to correct these situations. Um, it's not uncommon for us to, to give our children earplugs or it would not be abnormal for you to give your children earplugs during say a fireworks con uh, concert over at the ballpark or anything like that. Uh, try to preserve your child's hearing. We have uh, audiologists who will come on the show on a pretty regular basis, so I've learned a thing or two, Taylor, over the years, but he mentioned the earplugs. Yes, you can get customized ones, but you don't have to spend a lot of money. You can even just buy them at the drugstore, the foam ones, and they do a great job. Yes, anything is better than nothing. So at the Speech and Hearing Center, you have a phrase, is it? Twinkles, twinkles to wrinkles. So, so we see. serve patients of all ages. Okay. Is prevention the number one thing? Because sometimes you can just be born with a, an issue that causes hearing loss through no fault of your own. That's true. And so congenital hearing loss, we can't do much about. I mean, we can treat it. The only treatment for hearing loss is a hearing device. Um, but yes, prevention is key. Um, making sure that you're preserving your hearing. Um, because that's what's going to keep you later in life connected to people mm -hmm. and keep you from being socially isolated. Right. And they have linked um, hearing loss, untreated hearing loss, to dementia. And you mentioned untreated. Something else I've learned over the years, Dr. Miller, is that people tend to really put this off. The hearing loss begins to show and we all live kind of in denial, sometimes for as long as seven years. Uh, mm -hmm. That's correct. Um, you know, as a result of when we get older, uh, we'll, we'll tend to overlook when coworkers or family members ask us, uh, you know, we have to repeat ourselves. Uh, when you come to see your parents' house, they have the TV turned really way up. So we need to ourselves as the patient and our family members that we take care of, we need to be mindful of the fact that if we see something, we need to say something to them. We're so polite, but sometimes we need just to overcome that and, say, and ask and say, Mom, have you, when's the last time you've had your hearing checked? Well, and to that point about the TV being loud, that's the logical thought, I guess, if you're struggling to hear, but it's not always the right answer because am I right in this, Taylor? It depends on where the hearing loss lies. So in turning up the television, you might not really be impacting the right frequency of your hearing loss. Yes, so there are, you know, the, the range of frequencies and you can have a loss on the low end, so it's harder for you to hear um, lower sounds, mm -hmm. and which is usually men's voices, or you could uh, have a loss on the higher end of the scale and then it'd be harder uh, for a husband to hear his wife <laughs> or maybe that's selective hearing like that. but yeah I, you'd have to determine that. Don't get any ideas out there <laughs> fellas. Um, also something that I mentioned this time of year so we'll go to the adult side of it we're all out working in the yard uh, that grass mm -hmm. seems to grow far too quickly even simple things like blowing and mowing your grass you've got to mm -hmm. be mindful of is that mm -hmm. right? Uh, that's correct. I, I, I have noticed a trend. I see more people wearing headphones, even uh, individuals with mowing services and things like that. So someone is taking stock, whether or not it's something enforced or just something they're being mindful of. But even people just mowing their lawns, I'm seeing them wearing headphones when they're out there. And they should. You know, just a few minutes of being exposed to decibels above 75 can be detrimental to your hearing. It doesn't, re, um, it doesn't heal itself. No, Sadly. what you lose it, it does not come back. Right. So 
the only way you can do is just take care of it, just like you would your eyes or any other part of your body. So with the minute I have left, I know we're going to share phone numbers. At the health department, are you all there to be a resource to send people to the best place you can advise them to go? We do, and that's why we formed a partnership with the Hearing and Speech Center, because being a nonprofit, they're the only center in town that does provide free evaluation and care of these patients. So this is a wonderful opportunity to take care of our patients by something that we can't do at the health center, but send them to an authority that can help these individuals. I've heard 50 is the magic age to get that baseline hearing test. So y'all could do that there? Yes, so uh, you do need to get a hearing evaluation at 50, but um, and then you need to have one every year. Uh, but honestly, the recommendation is that you even start in your 30s and okay. go every five years. So should they call your office yes. to make an appointment? They is that can the best call thing? or go to our website okay. and contact us that way. Um, a lot of our services, we've got um, the speech side as well, mm -hmm. require a doctor's referral. Okay. So a lot of times um, you talk to your primary care physician and if you have a concern about your hearing, then uh, ask them to send a referral to the Speech and Hearing Center. We'll okay. take care. And the website is Speech and Hearing Center? SpeechHearing.com. I knew it had changed. Okay, SpeechHearing.com. And then there's the health department information as well. You're always welcome to call them. And if you didn't jot down the number in time, they can share it with you over at Speech and Hearing. Thank you both. Thank you. Thank you. Are you noticing mold or discoloration in your shower? Or maybe you just want to replace that old bathtub with something more modern and luxurious? Well, either way, we've got you covered. Hey everybody, I'm joined by BJ Worzen, owner of West Shore Home, to talk a little shower and bathroom modeling and how West Shore is making the entire process from start to finish fast and easy. BJ. Thanks, Joe. At West Shore Home, we understand the headaches and stress a remodeling project can cause. That's why everything that we do is designed to make it stress-free for our customers. A lot of people don't think of remodeling as stress-free, especially bathroom modeling. So how are you making a complicated process easier? Everything in our process can be done from the comfort of your own home. Give us a call and we'll send one of our bath experts out that has a 